Welcome to our Mount Calvary Lutheran Church uh, Daily Devotion for Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. I'm Pastor Dave Brighton, and this week I'm looking at some of my favorite Bible passages. Maybe some of them will be favorites for you, too. So yesterday I looked at uh, Romans 5, 1 to 5, the first part of Romans chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8, where Paul really lays out our Christian faith in, in great clarity and power. And uh, uh, I want to go from the beginning of these four chapters now to the end, because here's, boy, two of my favorite verses in the Bible, Romans chapter 8, verses 8, 38 and 39, where Paul just builds to this great crescendo, um, celebrating God's love for his children. So after starting chapter 8 with the bold statement, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Imagine, no condemnation from God for those who put their faith in Jesus. And then saying that, you know, the Spirit um, is there, uh, the Spirit intercedes for us, helps us in our weakness, and, and then uh, also that God works for the good of those who love Him. Just great passages in this chapter. Again, as I said, Paul builds to this great crescendo and just almost explodes with joy as he says these words. I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow, right? I mean, awesome, isn't it, to think that God has a love that big for us? Think about it. Nobody, not angels or demons or powers, can separate us from God's love. Time and space, you know, the present for the future, they can't separate us from God's love. Right? And he says, even the, the highest heights and the deepest depths can't separate us from God's love. And, and life and death can't separate us from God's love. And then just for good measure, Paul says, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, I hope to, that all of you might sit down and open your Bible sometime today. You know, maybe you're reading this first thing in the morning or a lunch break or in the evening, you, take, you read the daily devotion before bed. Just sit down with Romans 8, maybe read through that chapter, but especially read those last two verses, 38 and 39. Read them slowly. Take them in. Hear that closing crescendo well that nothing in all creation can separate us from God's love. Now, what's so special about this love of God? Well, let me uh, uh, explain this unconditional forever love of God to you. So in our English language, the word uh, love covers a lot of territory for us, doesn't it? Someone might say, um, I love uh, ice cream, I love my dog, and I love my wife. Now, hopefully, um, not in that order, <laughs> and hopefully there's, a, uh, you know, that word love in the relationship with a person's wife carries more weight than your love for your dog or your love for ice cream, all right? But in the, in the Greek language, um, there are four common words uh, for love that have different nuances. There's a, the word, and the first two are not in the New Testament. Storge, it's, a, it's, a, it's family love. Um, it's the love of parents for their children, a brother for sister. Uh, that's not used in the New Testament, although it's negative. Ah, storge is. That means, you know, the opposite of love, uh, you know, a, a heartlessness almost. Um, then the other word for the Greek that's not used in the New Testament is eros, you know, think erotica, right? Sensual, sexual love, not used in the New Testament. Two words for love are philios. Philia, or phileo, verb, that's used the most. And that's friendship love. You know, that's the love we have for our brothers and sisters in Christ. I grew up in uh, Philadelphia, and uh, Philadelphia is known as what? The city of brotherly love. Okay, so there's that word philia, right? Love. And then the word adelphos is brother. So philia adelphos, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. That's Philadelphia. Uh, unless you're at a sporting event, okay, <laughs> where even Santa got booed one time at an Eagles football game in December, but I digress. Now, the fourth common word, and for us, I think the most important Greek word for love in the New Testament 
It's agape. You've probably heard that word before, agape. This is God's love. Something kind of unique about this word. It, it came on late in, in classical Greek usage. In fact, we only have it preserved in one place in all of uh, ancient Greek literature. So that, that word agape, God's love, uh, the, the Christian church kind of has the corner on the market on this word. What does it mean? Well, 1 Corinthians 13, that's Paul's great chapter on love. And he describes love. He says love is patient, love is kind. Love is not easily angered, doesn't keep a record of wrongs, doesn't you know, always insist on its own way. He says that love always protects, always uh, hopes, always trusts, always perseveres. Love, love, love. Every time he uses that word, it's agape. It's God's love. In fact, in John's first letter, chapter 4, verse 8, he says, God is love. So think about that. All through 1 Corinthians 13, when we're saying God, love is patient, love is kind, doesn't get, keep a record of wrongs, you're not easily angered, we can say God is patient, God is kind, God is not easily angered, God doesn't keep a record of wrongs, God always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, right? That's, that's God's love. And, and what's so special about it is it's unconditional. There's no strings attached. This is God loving us because he wills to love us. Doesn't matter how you look, doesn't matter how many brains you have or don't have, you know, it doesn't matter how many good works you've done. God loves us simply because he wills to. And it's that agape love that prompted God to send his son into this world. Right? God so loved agape the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, it, it's that a love that won't quit on us. It's a love that won't toss us aside. Uh, it's a love that will always be there for us. And uh, um, that's the love that Paul is talking about in Romans 8, 38, 39, where Paul says again with such great conviction that nothing in all creation, think about it, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord that our God loves us that much. So again, I hope you'll meditate on these words. Romans 8, 38, 39. I mean, let them really see, seep into your heart and sink into your soul. Uh, because as we um, think about this love of God for us and, and uh, start to put that love, that unconditional, sacrificial, you know, putting others before ourselves love to, into practice in our lives, great things can happen. I mean, when we love with that love of God, you know, as, as much as we sinful humans can, I mean, that can change people's lives forever. So let's pray. Oh Lord God, to think that you love us with such a love, that is, a love that is so great, so powerful, so giving, unconditional, it's forever, and that nothing in all creation can separate us from your love. That's a lot to take in. And yet we rejoice. We rejoice that you love us that much. And we pray that you might lead us to love our family with storge love, to love our friends, philia love, in such a way that your unconditional, sacrificial, agape love shines forth in our lives to all those around us. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. God bless your day.